Hey, how's it going guys? This is Dave2D and this is a video on the MSI Vortex. So this is that tiny cylindrical PC that appeared at CES and when I first saw it, I thought I really need to get one in because it's super cool, but it's also obviously inspired by the Mac Pro, which is my daily driver, except it's a PC and it's geared towards gamers. Both good things, right? So to begin this video, I need to talk about why I like to use the Mac Pro. It's actually one of the most overpriced pieces of technology out there. I mean, it has pro-oriented hardware in there, ECC memory, Intel Xeon chips, and a pair of workstation graphics cards, but it comes at a very steep cost. And if you purchased it on launch day, it was already expensive. Two and a half years later, it's the same hardware, but it's not any cheaper. So right now it's comically overpriced. But there are two features that kind of make it special, or at least special enough for me to continue using it every day. First is the form factor. It's super small. A full-size ATX case is maybe 50, 60 liters. Something smaller, like a micro ATX, is around 40 liters. And even the smallest ITX cases that can hold a full-size graphics card, those are at least 10 to 12 liters. And it's tough to cool a system that small. The Mac Pro is five and a half liters. It's very small and properly cooled. The other feature for me is silence. See, the Mac Pro on idle and even under a moderate load is essentially silent. The fan is so quiet that you can't hear it when it's on. I have to put my hand over it to check for airflow. Now, most people don't care a lot about this stuff. They don't care about case size or fan noise. And for them, the Mac Pro is a complete ripoff. And I get it. If you're chasing good performance for the money, this is seriously one of the worst computers you can buy. But if you want something powerful that's abnormally small and actually silent, the Mac Pro is here to steal your money. But now we have the MSI Vortex, slightly bigger than a Mac Pro, but still super small at six and a half liters. There is no workstation hardware inside, and instead you have premium gaming components. It comes in two variants. Both of them have a pair of SSDs and RAID 0, a hard drive, a Skylake 6700K, but one version has 16 gigs of RAM with a pair of GTX 960s, and the second version, which is the review unit here, has 32 gigs of RAM and a pair of GTX 980s. This one is VR ready, but they're both very expensive. The design is pretty unique. It's a plastic enclosure that feels really durable, and it has RGB LEDs that you can control in software. Similar to the Mac Pro, it has a turbine looking fan at the top, and this is the one and only fan in the system. For ports, there are some audio ports up top, four USB 3s, a pair of HDMI 1.4s, a pair of Ethernet jacks, and on the bottom we have some Thunderbolt 3s and mini display ports. The Vortex can do triple monitor surround and a six screen setup if you're cloning. So the hardware combination that's inside this review unit has been benchmarked many times. I'm not gonna get into too many details, but it's a desktop Skylake i7 with a pair of desktop GTX 980s running an SLI, eight gigs of video RAM, it's gonna crush games, even at 4K. But I am interested in the thermal performance and fan noise. At the base clock speed of 4 GHz, the CPU didn't throttle down when it was running a CPU benchmark. The fans get loud, but there's no throttling. It's nicely cooled. The CPU temperature was in the low 90s. Overclocking is super easy. It's just a couple of clicks, but when I'm running the max overclock of 4.6 GHz, there was some throttling. Not a lot, but it is noticeable. The GTX 980s, when they're at max load, they sit around 75 degrees, also very respectable. As for fan noise, it's quiet when it's idling, but it's not silent, and I was kind of disappointed about this. I know I shouldn't be, it's hard to compare the thermal output between two different systems, but I've been spoiled by the Mac Pro, and I was hopeful. But considering the amount of heat that comes out of a pair of GTX 980s, it's actually very impressive. Fan noise, even on load, isn't too bad, and you can still comfortably play games with speakers. The last thing I want to touch on is upgradability. The RAM and all the storage drives are upgradable. They're not the easiest to access, but it is doable. And you'll likely be able to upgrade the CPU to the next generation KB Lake chips. But the graphics cards, you can physically remove them and replace them, but they use MXM cards. And even if they do make next gen Pascal versions of these, they're gonna be more expensive than regular desktop cards. So keep that in mind. Okay, here's the thing. When I saw the Vortex at CES, I remember thinking it was a really cool looking product and I was interested in it, but I didn't think it'd be a strong performer. I thought that MSI had just made this really cool looking computer, showed it off to the world and was like, hey, we can make one of these tubes too. I was very wrong. They nailed it. The performance is as good as a full-size desktop PC and the thermal management is fantastic. The thing that isn't fantastic is the price. Now, it is a custom engineered product. So something like this is kind of hard to gauge its value. It's a fully custom engineered solution. The casing, the chassis, the power supply, the PCBs for the motherboard, 
Everything is completely custom so it can fit into the super tiny case. If you're looking for a powerful gaming machine the size of a Mac Pro, this is an awesome choice. You just gotta be ready to pay up a little bit. That's the end of this video. Give me some thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. It's been nice. I'll see you guys next time.